The goal for this video is to start with the special right triangles that we had, the 45, 45, 90 degree, and 30, 60, 90 degree triangles, and use those uh, points that we got um, in the first quadrant to help us figure out what other points we would have that would be special points on the unit circle. Um, these points are going to be evenly spaced um, if we're looking strictly at uh, multiples of 45 degrees and multiples of 30 degrees all along the unit circle. After that, we'll combine all of them into one single unit circle. But here, let's look at them separately first. So when we had the 45-45 um, 90 degree triangle, we had just the single point here in the first quadrant. Now, compared to this kind of starting place, the starting place here would be at the point uh, 1 comma 0. That would correspond to 0 degrees um, at the origin. And so if we go along the unit circle in a counterclockwise direction, we get first to this 45 degrees point um, that kind of splits that first quadrant um, in half. Now, we want to take um, that amount around the unit circle and evenly space out throughout the rest of the unit circle. So we'd have our next point being at the top of the unit circle. Then we'd have a point here right in the middle of the second quadrant. And then we'd have a point at the left-hand side of the unit circle. And we'd have a point uh, in the middle of the third quadrant. We'd have a point at the bottom of the unit circle. And then finally we'd have a point at the middle of the fourth quadrant. So now those are the locations um, evenly spaced around the unit circle that are all going to be multiples of 45 degrees. Now in math, typically we're not looking at degrees, but rather at radians when we're talking about the unit circle. Um, and even evaluating a trig and inverse trig, we're always looking back here at radians. And so I need to also uh, talk about how to uh, think through radians. Well, here at um, kind of our starting place, it was zero degrees. That's also going to be zero radians. Radians. Um, if we go all the way around the unit circle in a counterclockwise direction, uh, it would also be uh, 360 degrees, which we understand as 2 pi. 2 pi is all the way around the unit circle. So now let's think through this. If 2 pi is all the way around the unit circle, then halfway around the unit circle is going to be at pi. Okay. Um, if we, instead of going all the way halfway around the unit circle, we go half of the half, it would be pi over 2. And then if we half it yet one more time, we have pi over 4. Now pi over 4 happens to be exactly our 45 degrees, for which we could just convert that automatically, but that, that is in fact what we're looking at here. Pi over 4 is kind of our building block for this first set of points on our unit circle. So now, uh, rather than having to convert each single angle here, I think that it's far easier just to count. And so I'm going to show you guys how to count. It amounts to counting um, and then reducing. And so we, again, we start at 0, and our first one was 1 pi over 4. This next one ended up being 2 pi over 4, which we know reduces down to pi over 2 like we anticipated. The next one will be 3 pi over 4. Now 3 pi over 4 doesn't reduce. Um, we could just keep that. That's already in lowest forms. But see here we've got 4 pi over 4 to continue our counting. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4. We could do 5 pi over 4. 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, and 8 pi over 4. Okay. Now some of these reduce and some don't. Um, like I said, the 3 pi over 4 doesn't reduce. That's our nice um, already reduced form. 4 pi over 4 does reduce to the pi we expected it to be. 5 pi over 4 doesn't reduce anymore, so that's just uh, what we want there. 6 pi over 4 does reduce. There's a common factor of 2 on the top and the bottom that could be reduced out, giving us 3 pi over 2. And then 7 pi over 4 is already reduced. And then the 8 pi over 4, top and bottom have a common factor of 4 that could be reduced out to give us the 2 pi that we expected. And so these angles that I wrote kind of on the inside of the unit circle are a reduced form. But realize that what I did was I got those in reduced form by reducing just what I get when I count. So I amounted to counting 1 
pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 pi over 4. If I can count 1 to 8 and then reduce, then I have all of those values that I want. Now we're going to do the same thing for the um, multiples of pi over 6, which are our 30 degrees. Now let's think through here. When we had our 30, 60, uh, 90 degree triangle, that gave us two points that were um, in the first quadrant. One that was associated with the 60 degrees and one that was associated with the 30 degrees um, at the origin. Now, we still do have this um, starting angle here that would be zero degrees, or if we go all the way around the unit circle once in the counterclockwise direction, it'd be two pi. Um, and so what we're doing then is trying to evenly space all of these points out all along the unit circle, just like we did before with our building block being pi over four. This time our building block is going to be pi over six. And you can do a little bit of fraction work to realize that is where um, our starting place would be. Um, and what it does is it catches, again, the top, uh, the bottom, the right, and the left-hand side of the unit circle. So those um, places that are on the x and y axis, it would catch. But then it also catches um, evenly space. It, basically, it takes each quadrant and it splits it into three even equal pieces instead of two equal pieces like the previous one did. And so I've got uh, two points in each uh, quadrant evenly spaced here to label. Okay. And so I have pi over 6 as my building block. So I'm going to count the number of pi over 6s all the way around the unit circle so that I can label all these. So I'm going to count first and then I'll reduce second. So I already have my pi over 6 labeled. The next one would be 2 pi over 6 then we'd have 3 pi over 6, and then we'd have 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, 9 pi over 6, 10 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6, and then all the way back to 12 pi over 6. So now it really is as easy as counting 1 to 12. Just like the previous circle was counting 1 to 8, now we count 1 to 12, where we're counting how many pi over 6s we have. So the last step to get the, right, the correct angles here would be to reduce the ones that need to be reduced. So 2 pi over 6, we've got a common factor of 2 on the top and the bottom, would be pi over 3. 3 pi over 6 would be our pi over 2 which is what we had found in the previous uh, circle as well. Uh, 4 pi over 6 has the common factor of 2 again, so we can have 2 pi over 3. 5 pi over 6 is reduced. 6 pi over 6, the 6 is reduced out, leaving you with the pi that you expect to have. 7 pi over 6 is reduced. 8 pi over 6 has the common factor of 2, so that'd be 4 pi over 3. Uh, 9 pi over 6 has a common factor of 3, so that would be 3 pi over 2, like again we expected from the previous circle. Uh, 10 pi over 6 has a common factor of 2, so that would be 5 pi over 3. 11 pi over 6 is reduced. And then the 12 pi over 6, the 12 over 6 reduces to 2, so that we have 2 pi like we expected. And so we can get all of these angles that may, upon first glance, look, you know, somewhat random, somewhat complicated, a lot to memorize. And we can get them if we can simply remember what our kind of building block place was. So here, for this one, it, our building block was the pi over 6. And for the other previous one, we had that our building block was pi over 4. So we have that building block and then go all around the unit circle by counting. Uh, for the blue ones, we had counting 1 through 8. And for the, the pink ones, we had counting 1 through 12. Um, a quick reduction gives us all the angles that we want. And so then it just remains to take all the angles that we see in these two unit circles and uh, carefully stick them into uh, one single unit circle so that we can get all the values that we can write our ordered pairs down for. And that'll be our next task.